It's the brightest and biggest innovation of the 21st century. Yeah. It's Bad TV. Entertainment at your doorstep. Hello, you're welcome to this program, Earth Rhythm Personal on Back TV. My name is Sinclair Davis. Right now, we're bringing to you dignitaries and influential people in the society that will be talking about their lifestyle. Right now, I'm at Lagos State University on your main campus. You might be wondering who my guest is for today. Well, you want to know? Then let's go. So naturally, it's easy to, very easy to understand the fact that uh, this is a difficult combination. But I have one advantage, and that advantage is the fact that I don't have my family around. The kids are both working in the U.S. They went to school in the U.S. while I was abroad, and uh, they have stayed back. My wife has not been in the country. I came back alone in 2004. So I have all the time to concentrate on what I have to do, both in the university and in the hospital. Um, I know that as an individual, I've always believed in excellence. I've always believed in putting everything that is required. Motivation has always been a drive toward excellence. I've never been the kind of person who would want to be seen as part of the crowd. I've always loved a situation where I would distinguish myself, create a niche for myself. When I left medical school, I did not go into the specialties where you have so many people. But apart from that again, I realized that pathology is a very tough field because we are the consultant to consultants. It requires a lot of courage, it requires academic excellence. Um, and I had to take up that challenge. While in pathology, of course when I went into pathology uh, to train, I was the first person, first post graduate. And I, I encourage others to join me. But by the time I was finishing pathology postgraduate training, I, I already started thinking about doing forensic pathology. And moving away from the mainstream of pathology into forensic, which is something very Strange, I said, at least at that time, very strange to the nature of context. And 
I've been moving to forensic pathology while I'm from. I decided again to move into law, to acquire a law degree. Such that by the time you're saying you're a pathologist or you're saying you're a forensic pathologist, I'm already a step ahead. Let me tell you one story. It just occurred to me now. When I was preparing for my final exam for the membership of the Royal College of Pathologists in the Subspeciality of Forensic, my supervisor said to me, he calls me John, he said to me, he said, John, the pass mark for our boys is 50, but your pass mark is 70. He said, I hope you understand what I'm saying. And I said, yes. He said, you know the opportunity for you to score 70, you have to aim for 90. So that when they bring it down, you will come to 70. He was not actually saying that my pass mark <coughs> is 70. The message he was trying to send to me is that because of my background, I need to be seen to perform very well beyond their boys. If you are operating at the level of their boys, nobody will show respect for you. You need to be there. And I will explain why when I did my final MRC perfect and the forensic pathology, I was the only person that passed. December 1992, across the UK. During my university days, hmm, I was very studious. But I was also playful. I was even a member of the Kekai Kekai School. Mm. The other specialty that interested me uh, was surgery. Now the question is this, what if I didn't study medicine? The truth of the matter is that I never wanted to be a doctor. I was forced to study medicine by my mother. Being the last born, um, the older ones had gone into different areas. My mother was a nurse and she said, you know what? All the older ones have chosen one career path or the other. They are the last one. I have control over you. You have to go and study medicine. So I want to be you know, my doctor. <laughs> I wanted to study engineering. But she forced me to do physics chemistry biology for my A level. So that was how I got into medicine. As a medical student, I was fascinated by a particular surgeon. In fact, when I was um, in his team for my junior surgical posting, I was in his unit and I was the group captain. Very fascinated about this person. He was the fastest surgeon in Luth at that time. You know the name? Professor Paul Agolimito. I enjoy watching TV. Because news channel, foreign news, CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera. When I'm not listening to the news, I probably watch Africa Man. On rare occasions, I go to one of the clubs. Uh, I remember some of the clubs. So I show my face occasionally, I will sit down, we will have a couple of drinks. If I have the opportunity to go dancing, I go dancing. Okay. I'm very conservative, naturally conservative. By the nature of the job, I will put on a suit, go a tie. You will notice I normally wear a bow tie. Sure. I was influenced to wearing bow ties long ago. People that influenced me, two of them. My late professor of pathology, Professor Eugene Montego, and my late senior brother. They were always in Bota. I got to know the reason why I was always in Bota. The same thing with Professor Lithia Modi, another consultant. When they came downstairs, in the autopsy room to supervise whatever we were doing. 
They didn't want the situation where that long time will be hanging and dangling on the bodies. So they were always in the time. Something happened. An interesting story. Something happened about uh, three months ago. I went to visit a friend of mine. And while we were talking, I went to his office. And while we were talking, he said, You know, from I don't like the way you dress. He said, What's the problem? He said, You've forgotten the fact that we are Western so you are dealing with students. You don't relate with them. I said, but I talk to them. I, I, I try to interact with them. He said, You've not been doing enough. This thing you are wearing is not what you should be wearing. Look at your trousers. And I said, What's the problem with my trousers? He said, You see? You're putting on a conservative pen. That should be putting on a pencil. So I said, He said, Yes, that's the way. I said, Oh. And he, he told me, When next you come to my office, I don't want to see you in this suit. I went to class, giving lectures, and uh, I asked him to chop a question. He was not able to give me the proper answer. No time to study properly, but uh, he's into designing and uh, sewing that he has uh, to learn. But somebody mentioned the thing to me, benchmark. I said, oh, really? So you sew clothes? He said, yes. So I said, can you sew me a pencil? And he said, yes. Uh, so it's there, and then I, I booked for two trousers, which were delivered, and essentially I'm wearing one of them now. <laughs> so, you <laughs> want to see what it looks like? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Wow, so, this, is, this is nice. That was our so pencil. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, I promised myself that I'm going to show some more. <laughs> My favorite meal. I like a combination of beans with corn. The Yoruba is really fatty, it has like that. I enjoy it. And I can cook it very well. The other thing I enjoy eating is uh, the wagon with the typical sauce that mm. goes with it and uh, if you have fried plantain, fine, I enjoy it a lot. Of the swallow crook, the one that I love most is amala. <laughs> and I like amala with the way to and very good. As for drink, I'm happy to say that I drink anything. I love red wine. That would be the favorite. Yes, that's true. But if you give me anything, I'll take it. I was going back in 1980. I was doing my internship at Adelio State Hospital. By the way, she's a nurse. I was on an emergency duty at that time. And I was told that um, there was an issue in the, I believe it was a female medical ward. And I had to go and attend to the patient for the emergency room. In the course of doing that, I was asked some questions by the nurses on, on duty. My wife was a student nurse at that time. I was answering the questions. Of course, in the course of answering the questions, I was also posing as a young doctor. I just went past my 21st birthday that was Posing and education. One thing led to the other. And uh, we started going out until six years later when we got married. Life we bring nothing and we go with nothing. Whatever position we find ourselves, whatever the situation is just drastic. My training and job as a, as a pathologist has even made me to understand life much better. 
on that autopsy table, there's no difference between the king and the slave. In fact, every day that you leave and that you wake up and move around is a gift. You'll be faced with a stark reality. That most of us, we have things that we don't need. You cannot live in more than one room at a time. You cannot ride in more than one car at a time. So why do you want to amass all these things? It's a waste of time. Whatever you have to do, do it well. Just take it as a blessing. Advice for the youth. I'll say they should, whatever they do, do it very well. People will respect you for being able to do what you have to do and for doing it very well. People should be able to note you to be a very disciplined person and to to command respect on the job. Some people will try to use you and while using you they will like you but they won't respect you because they know they can use you. So my advice to you, whatever you have to do, do it very well. Excel in it. And every other thing shall be added up to you. Thanks for having me. It's been fun and educative. This brings us to the end of today's program on Up Close and Personal on Bax TV. I am Tinkerbo Davis. Till I come away again. Bye. <laughs>